everybody. Welcome back to the Music Buds podcast. This is episode number 51, and my name is Henry. Uh, this week, I'm honored to be joined by Dolly Daggers of Tokyo Taboo. Uh, Dolly, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. Uh, as I've said to you before, I, I really am a fan, so I appreciate you being here. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, how's life for you, first of all? Um, it's okay, yeah. So things are getting back to normal slowly slowly um so in october november we have a few gigs planned and then from next year we have a little tour planned as well so yeah it's it's looking good so far yeah. <laughs> well i i know you've talked about it before but how is it that the, the band got got started uh, in the beginning yeah so um i used to be really into um pop music so like um i used to write songs sort of in the style of katy perry and lady gaga that was sort of my vision i always wanted to be a pop star mm-hmm. and and um what happened was is um i met mike and he was doing um playing guitar uh sort of accompanying me for like acoustic unplugged um gigs and then slowly i guess as you get older you start to listen to different types of music and from there we started to write together and then he's a lot more um influenced by led zeppelin and um different like bands i guess more than female singers and so we kind of mashed together those two things just kind of happened um Mm -hmm. yeah so that's kind of how the band started yeah and uh with some of your songs having a, a political uh, style to them or, or basis to them. Was that just like a natural part of songwriting for you? I think so. Uh, the first political song we did was make it out alive, which we wrote in response to, uh, there was at the time there was a vote in the houses of parliament about, um, Syria bombing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember exactly what happened now, but our government here is quite right wing that um, they voted for bombing Syria. And so um, just when your government is so right, right wing, you feel like you, um, you just feel a bit like, um, ang- not angry, but frustrated, I think is the word. So that song came from that, the frustration of feeling a bit like, almost like it's a parallel universe, what happens and what gets voted for. Mm-hmm. And the government, was cheering they were sort of like very happy that they voted to bomb a country um just was crazy to me and it uh really i guess upset me as well and so yeah little things like that and obviously we wrote american dream in response to trump yeah thing (laughs) be the way yeah and just like sometimes you just look at the world and you just think how has this happened or like how are they applauding something like killing loads of people and you just feel like a bit of an alien in this strange world um mm. yeah so those songs i guess are a response to that um my other cat wants to jump on this no it's okay <laughs> um all the cats no <laughs> off <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so the political thing comes from i just like you know you just feel kind of frustrated and it's like a response I didn't think we were thinking about becoming political. It was just sort of happened like that. Right. And, and with you having brought up American Dream, like there's a pretty crazy, was a pretty crazy response to that, right? Mm-hmm. What, I mean, because I, I, I saw the, the video, but j- just as a, a basis, like what, what happened with that song? Yeah, so it was a funny one because being in lockdown in the UK um, and then seeing that Trump... Obviously, the election was last year during being kind of locked at home. So we had to think of a way to get the song out, obviously, because there was a chance. We were hoping that he wouldn't um, uh, have another four years in office. Mm. Um, And we didn't want to hang on to the song because obviously if he, like knowing what we do now, we wouldn't really, it wouldn't be very topical to use the song. And we also wanted to, you know, if there's a lot of talk about, Trump because of the election we wanted to just like use that to our advantage and get the song out there yeah so 
the fact that we were at home and sort of stuck meant that we couldn't really do a video involving like loads of people, you know, um, it had to be maybe like one person that we were filming. So we thought about the deep fake idea was actually Mike's idea. Mm. And what happened with that is he was, it worked quite well because it just literally involved the one guy who was going to be Trump and then maybe just as filming, there wasn't really much in the way of like a load of crew needed. That mm -hmm. makes sense. And it wasn't the biggest budget really that we used on the video was post-production. So that's just one person um, sat on the computer doing everything. Mm -hmm. So and that was quite good for lockdown. So that's why we decided on that concept really. And then also just deep fake is quite an interesting, weird in itself. <laughs> yeah. Just the idea of like not really knowing what's true and what's false. And then we kind of just created a story from there about fake news. And um, we kind of created another Trump that was um, threatening us. So there was the Trump video with a fake Trump and then there was this fake another fake Trump threatening us. So we just sort of went along with that whole fiction, I guess, of not really knowing what's true and what's false. And then our marketing campaign was just really around creating a fake news site and then contacting media and say, and just sending it to them. And it got spread quite quickly. It spread quite quickly with fans not knowing whether it was real or not. And some people figured out it was, it was obviously it's made up but it just got people thinking, I think, a little bit, and it, it made people comment and share the video. And, uh, yeah, it had some virality to it, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's... Yeah, I mean, you seem to kind of hit the nail on the head, like, I mean, in terms of the whole fake news... Yeah. Just uh, fiasco, you know? Um, <laughs> so... Um, well, interesting is that it could have happened, you know, that he could have threatened us, you know? It's not... Um, it's not like that's not his personality. I mean, obviously he had bigger things going on and I doubt he would really care like if a fan said something about him, but he's that kind of uh, childish and like, you know, um, what's the word for him? I'm not sure. I had a word in my head and it's gone. But you know, like um, he just really has a big ego and really just cares what people say the whole time. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Well, now, uh, another interesting thing about the band is, um, some of it was how you perform because you have these really incredible, like pole acrobatics that you do uh, on stage. A lot of the time, sometimes while you're singing and, and, and other things, did that aspect, was that something you had done before the band or is that something that just kind of happened after you, the band got started? So I think I started pole about three years ago. So not very long ago. And the band is a bit older. So I think I started doing pole and I just became sort of like addicted to it. <laughs> and then I got my own stage pole. And I said to um, I said to Mike, oh, I really want to start like having this in the gig. And even if I just do like one thing on it or just like have it as a prop, you know. So that's how it started. Like I literally just had it at the side of the stage and I would just stand on it or do like really simple trick on it. And then that was it. And then we did a lot of gigs in 2019 festivals and like loads. I think we did more gigs than we've ever done in the space of a year. And um, we just put, use the pole all the time. And then it just became like, I just got quite comfortable with singing at the same time as moving around with it. And yeah, so that's where we are now. Um, and then now like, if we do play a gig in the venue, it's a bit funny about it. I just will just say, okay, well, we're not performing then. Because <laughs> it's become, you know, even if uh, we did a gig in May and it was like really small stage and uh, like not really ideal because, you know, I could easily kick someone or, mm. you know, because it, it was such a small everyone was like sort of shoved together because of the social distancing thing on stage. We had to kind of stay on stage. So yeah, that was interesting, but even so like it's still there. So I didn't want to like do a show and someone be like, Oh, why didn't you have the poll? They're like mm. people kind of expect it now. 
Mm-hmm. So is the it like in terms of you you playing shows when when that's been happening like is the is there a response to you doing that because I feel like you know I it's rare I go to a concert and see that and so like is it like I mean you're saying you know people kind of expect it now and so I guess yeah so, I guess so it has become kind of the the norm for one of your shows yeah what I mean by that is um yeah if you've been to a show then you'd expect me to do it if that makes sense mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, one of our shows, I mean, because it's rare that we have it. We don't have it now. And then I guess if you're, if like sometimes we'll play bigger shows with a bigger audience and maybe they don't know who we are. You know, there's lots, lots of shows where we're just added on. Maybe they've come to see someone else or whatever. Then, yeah, they'll be, they'll be a bit like shocked and like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? But it's helpful to pull because I usually wear really high shoes. So I can't really walk in them. So like to have the pole, like to like hold on to it. <laughs> Helpful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the <Just> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, no, like this is kind of a, a broad question, but like you, with um, COVID, I mean, not being over, but kind of starting to see kind of the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, what is it like being in a band right now? Like in, in like mid 2021, like, is it, you know, with things starting to lighten up a little bit, is it kind of, you know, exciting or inspiring or is it still kind of, I Um, I don't know, frustrating because you don't really know how it's all going to go. Yeah. So I think what I learned over this whole pandemic thing is that the only thing you can really control is how you react to things. So I try not to react like as in like, it's easy for me to say, right. But if, if I start like building all my hopes up on these gigs in November and next year, then obviously if things come crashing down and there's a variant or, you know, no one really knows what's going to happen. I, I've kind of done it to myself in a way because I've built it up and like I've started, you know, started like planning and like, obviously you have to plan, but maybe not with like a lot of emotion in it. So I just sort of take each day at a time and just try not to, like worry about what's going to happen. So I think it's good that we have these gigs in October, November. But if they weren't going to happen, like if I found out, oh, they've been cancelled, then I just would try not to feel annoyed or upset, if that makes sense. Because it's a waste of energy. And yeah, I just try and like stay with today and not worry too much. Uh, look forward to it when, when things get back to normal. And the gigs that we have booked in are like, pretty nice ones but you know if, try not to like overthink about it too much just yeah. in case they get away from me <laughs> yeah and, and now uh, i know you had the some music come out last year what else were you, you doing uh, over the pandemic were you kind of uh, otherwise taking a break or were you staying busy with things so we've been trying to um finish a music video which we actually shot the first bit for in 2019 and then we were going to pl- we were planning on shooting the rest just before lockdown in the UK, which was March 2020. And so yeah, we're tr- we're still working on that. Um, it's quite a complicated video just because we're trying to film overseas, and obviously we can't travel overseas. So there's that. And then we're also trying to film in a politically um, funny place, like it's not really like a uh politically secure place so it's a bit Mm. uh, of an interesting place to travel anyways yeah so there's that um so that's been sort of like up and down and then what else we've been doing we've been trying to write songs so mike has been writing songs and then i've been like training paul like the whole time (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's the only thing that sort of kept me motivated because with anything to do with fitness i feel like whatever you put in you get out directly it's like directly proportional like your energy that you put in you see the results of it really quickly whereas with music at the moment like uh, i feel like it's a bit of a frustrating time because obviously we can't gig necessarily or like we will soon but there's that thing of like even if we do have songs we can't we could release them but without a tour so there's this whole weird thing so I'm, I'm trying to just focus on like something that's a bit more uh productive I guess mm. <clears throat> yeah but yeah we've we've been keeping busy 
um definitely yeah well with the like the, the music videos that you've and you know like the one that you're working on and the ones that you've already done like what's the 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 process like or the i guess the like how does the idea the style come out when you're beginning like is that something you're really discussing and then you go into it or is, or is it something that kind of develops as it goes along depends which one so some of them like um make it out alive and um bubblicious and drowning there's a few of them where we literally just got one of our friends uh, when we were in the u.s we got one of our friends to just film like some place like we literally we had like an idea so like we'd make it out alive we wanted it to look derelict and like the end of the world type thing that was like the idea and then um with drowning we were thinking oh like with waves you know because of water you know um yeah. like that we had but then a lot of the time it does just sort of evolve as, as you work on them other videos like whiskey was really the opposite so the director um gabriel he wrote everything out so he had every shot and he pretty much i think he got everything he wanted i'm not sure but i can't but it was shot over two days and then he literally had like bang 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 we're gonna shoot this this and this and this and this it was all really well organized and there was not really much improvisation it was literally just like he like he had to change certain things but really it was um really well organized um yeah it depends who we're working with really as mm. well but yeah and and is it a like a because it's i feel like it could be totally like subjective like is it a kind of a comfortable thing to do a music video like i know some people don't mind it all other people it just makes them nervous like it would make me nervous if i was doing it but mm -hmm. i'm always curious <laughs> yeah i'm not sure i think i think i'm like i usually find it really exciting i guess what's uncomfortable is maybe that it costs usually costs a lot of money some of them we've done on like no budget and we've literally just like been somewhere and shot it and then i've edited it myself or like it's been like really low budget but like for some of the like whiskey and the uh, one that we were working on, it's been a bit more complicated and yeah. So that's when you start getting a bit nervous when you're just like trying to figure it out, like how to get it to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we'll, uh, some things just take time, I guess. Yeah. And, and also with the the pandemic and everything, has like a has it been still it has it been enjoyable or, or easy to connect with fans uh, or, and perhaps even other, other bands, other artists during the pandemic? Like has something like social media been really helpful to you to help being with uh, mm -hmm. other people, so to speak? Um, so when the pandemic first started, so when we went uh, lockdown in the UK, first lockdown was March last year. We started to do a few Facebook live um acoustic gigs and that was quite fun to start with um because it was like novelty and then <laughs> eventually as the lockdown went on for four months or something and then started easing up then we were just like oh like everyone seems to be doing facebook live so we kind of stopped doing it so much but yeah there was that moment when everything was just you know everything was just social media there was no other way to contact people or for fans to see you or connect with you but now like yeah i i think i'm missing just actually doing a gig <laughs> <laughs> you know because it's not even the gigs now like the last gig we did was in may and because we were all sort of smushed onto the stage which is better than no gig i'm not complaining it was just a bit weird because you have you kind of have to think oh okay so i can't go into the crowd at all and you can't have like any real audience participation, like put the microphone to them or, you know what I mean? Like you have mm. to like, really think about, you can't really be spontaneous anymore as much. And also like the thing is sometimes it's quite fun to have the poll in the crowd so that I'm actually like among people. I can be a bit mad, but it's still fun. Like little things like that, like, it's just like, yeah, it's a bit more, you know, <laughs> you have to really like overthink everything um it's a bit weird but yeah hopefully soon we'll be back to just performing and not worrying about going into the crowd and and performing how we usually perform yeah and, and with having you know brought up like the 
like dancing in the crowd like since that would be like a pretty memorable thing like are there any concerts concerts that you look back on that you are either favorites anything any, anything in particular that you think of when you think of good concerts um of our own shows or like other people's of when you of you you've, the ones that you've gone to see oh okay i remember do you know a band called pretty reckless oh i love them yeah 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 yeah, I thought you'd know them. I was checking. Yeah. Uh, we saw you, um, at the House of Blues in LA when it existed. Um, it's it's gone now, but uh, I remember watching what's her name Taylor, mm. and I it was super cool because she had really high boots on, and she was literally just wearing like underwear, and then she was just like rocking out, and I just thought her performance was amazing, and just like little like. Like for me, I guess as a female, I I really love watching strong female performers. Not just female performers, but that for me, like like yeah. inspired. And then obviously, like touring with bands, like we did the Lips Can Til- Lips Can Kill tour in the UK, which was us and your mom, Polly Pickpockets, and Healthy Junkies. So that was really cool because um, it was just being with similar bands with female front people and just yeah just being around like strong front women is really always cool always interesting yeah for sure they were musical style but like the females sort of at the front it's really cool yeah well it, it, it's really nice talking to you um it, and i know you've, you've talked about the um the upcoming music video and, and the possible uh, shows coming up. Is there anything else in particular I, I haven't brought up that you'd like to have known something else coming up or anything else about the band? Um, I was just like to ask just in case. <laughs> I feel like I should have prepared something. <laughs> that's, that's, it's okay. Uh, um, uh, no, but we're hoping to, we did like a really cool acoustic video for our new song. So we're hoping to release that soon. Well, soon um because the full music video isn't done yet so we're hoping to release and start um releasing things soon with that um otherwise yeah just give us a follow on on i guess on social media and um when live things do start happening properly again uh with less restriction just come to a show we'll try and we'll try and tour and give everyone the opportunity to come see us yeah for sure all right. Well, uh, Dolly, thank you so much again uh, for taking the time. And, you know, I, I listen to your, your music all the time. So I, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and would love to get you back on, you know, sometime down the road. Um, so I love podcasts. I listen to podcasts all the time. Yeah, same here. <laughs> um, all right, everybody. I think that is about it for the show this week. Please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on your way out. Thank you so much. You can also check out my other weekly podcast, The Film Buds. You can follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Music Buds. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and we'll see you next time.